Rando the bolo bolse, Rando the bolo bolse, Rando the bolo In the name of Jesus. Amen. We want to just get this meeting started. Mm. It's been good. And I want to just welcome every one of us to this position. Personally, with what has been burning in my heart and in my mind, I have resolved that throughout this year until the end of the year, I would be talking about finances. I will be talking about wealth. I would be talking about real riches. Um, on Facebook Live, I'm passing becoming an economic powerhouse. And how we can discover the true purpose for wealth, or we can discover true riches and its purpose. It's, in, it's very important where it belongs. And on the Thursdays, I've been doing another dimension to it. And then on, uh, yeah, so Facebook Live now, Saturday evening at 9, 9 p.m., 21.00 GMT. Um, currently doing some teaching on the marketplace, defining the marketplace environment, what it looks like, what it looks like, what is in control, what is in charge. How are things determined? And last Thursday on this call, we had a wonderful conversation and Kelvin brought us to a certain perspective. Um, all right, all right. You are distracting me. Sorry, sorry about that. So Kelvin took us... Kelvin took us through some wonderful conversation on Thursday. We want to just unleash Kelvin in his full momentum. Kelvin, it's wonderful to have you again and again and again. Please, over to you. Thank you, Mark. It is so good to be here again and again and again. It is so good uh, to have uh, my brothers and sisters on on the call here. Good to see Castley. Um, good to see Zarina, Timmy. Good to see Samuel. Good to see Michael. Good to see Galaxy 30. I want, uh, last week we talked about economy as it related to the man who had his feet and ankle bones that were weak. And we talked about weak hands and knees and feet and how that could immobilize someone from being industrious. It brings limitations, it brings all of those kind of things. Today, I want to look at the aspect of the mind. I wanna look at the aspect of the mind. We talked about the physical part, the knees, the feet, the hands. And when those things are available to us, we can be creative, we can work, we can be industrious, we can move forward in having energy and strength with that. I wanna draw 
the first part of my conversation today on Matthew 25, as we record the story of the man who gives the talents to three people. He gives one, he gives five, the other he gives three, and the other he gives one. And we read where he gives these according to their abilities. But they were servants. And he was going to come back and he was going to receive what they had done. The one that had five doubled it. I think the one that had three doubled his. And the other one hid his talent. I want to talk today about faithfulness and logistics. Faithfulness and logistics. I want to consider logistics because we see it all through scripture. Here, the, the, the three servants were given something from the master to do something with it. Um, one of the things that I wanted to say about using the mind in faithfulness in logistics and, and, and dealing with those kind of things is this, is that these three, uh, at least two of them, had a plan. They thought that if they ever got the opportunity, if they ever got the opportunity, they thought about what they would do. And, uh, and you could tell, by the way, the one with five, what he did with the talents. He completely implemented he implemented, he implemented his plan, what he was talking, thinking about when he would get opportunity. So when his opportunity came, he showed the master what he was able to do by multiplying what he had. Um, then he, he looked, the one here in, uh, it's in Matthew 25. And then it says, uh, verse 22, he also, who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you have delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents. So he doubled the two and um, two more talents besides them. And the Lord said to them, good and faithful servant, you have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things Enter to the joy of your Lord. I want to say that the statement that the that the manager or the owner had, he gave a principle, uh, Jesus, Jesus gave a principle with this. He said, "I, um, you have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many. So he goes from a steward, a servant to a ruler because of good logistics, because of good management of the resources that was available because the one with five and the one with two had ability to double what they had received. And they knew how much because they, they were able to see that, hey, I doubled, I got two, I doubled it, I had five, I doubled it. So they could record, it was manageable because you can't manage what you can't see. So they were able to manage duplicating these talents. Now, I want to look at management and logistic in other in other regards. Now, we had the one, you all know that we had the one that um, had people coming in. We had the one that hid his talent. Then he, he came up with excuses. He said, Lord, you know, uh, I knew you to be a hard taskmaster. And, you know, so I went and I tit, I hid my talent and uh, those kind of things. And so there's dynamics into getting into that with the excuses that he made. However, um, what the master said to him, you, he called him a wicked servant because he was not able to duplicate what he was given. When we read in Genesis 1, we are given the, the command that God had for, for humans. Be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. So we, we already have the mandate from God as humans, male and female, to be fruitful and multiply. All right? Whether that is with children, whether that is with finance, 
whether that is with resources, be fruitful and multiply is the mandate that we have received. So we read nothing where you're to bury what God has given you. So he was described as a wick, wicked and faithless servant. Now I want to look at the, the time that Jesus was feeding the 4,000 4, and the 5,000 when one time when Jesus asked him, what do we have? And um, they say, we don't have anything, just a few little money here we just have. He says, have the people sit down in groups of 50. And, you know, you wonder why would Jesus go through these changes? Why couldn't you just break off the bread and the fish and feed everybody? But Jesus had order. And I think that inside of what you and I are given by God is to bring an orderly concept and an orderly kind of demonstration of our faithfulness that when we think about the resources that God gives us, our management of it brings us into rulership. So you may start off as an employee, but you will you will turn into a ruler. Um, you may start off one way, but it will multiply into rulership. Now, this is management over resources. So Jesus said, set them down in groups of 50. And he did. And that's another reason why you know you had 5,000 is because if you sit them down in groups, Groups of 50, and then you, you know, you do the math on it, then you find out, well, this is what happened. Now, after that, Jesus is so um he he's he's a he's a good manager. He's a good manager. They had 12 baskets left over. And so there was no waste that even though there was a miracle, I mean, how does this little boy have four? Uh, three fish, uh, uh, five barley loaves, two fish and five barley loaves, you know, after following Jesus, I think for three days. Uh, what is the chances of that? You know, um, and and another miracle, people following Jesus, you know, and he's, he's feeding them spiritually and he has to say, good management, good, good, good logistics, good, good thoughtfulness on others. We must feed these people. They've been following us for three days with nothing to eat. So we see the compassion of God. We see the heart of God by taking into consideration the human element, the human component, not just taking for granted that people are following, but we want to make sure that both their natural and their spiritual needs are met. That's good stewardship. So, they took 12 baskets that were left over, nothing was wasted, and, and they had 12 baskets left over. So that gives an account for that great miracle that started with, you know, five barley loaves and two fish. So we go into the things where, you know, they gave it to Jesus and he took it and he blessed it and it was put in his hands. And so the miracle happened as a result of them surrendering what they had to the Lord and they gave him what they had really wasn't his. It was borrowed from the young man that, that gave it. And so we see the miracle there. Then we see logistics. I'm going to talk about these things. I want to talk about it. Um, we see uh, logistics with Job and his life. There were records in the book of Job about how much he had. You know, his, his oxen and his, all of these things. I want to just see if I can find this in the book of Job. When it's describing uh, this man, he's a man of order. He's a man of logistics. He's a man that uh, is able to manage what God has given him. It talked about here in Job 1 and 3. Also, his possessions were 7,000 sheep. 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and very large household, so that this man was the greatest of all people in the East. Why did they care to list what he had? Because it tells us about the management that this man had inside of his life. He was able to keep record over what God had blessed him with. He was able to keep record over what 
had increased under his care. And I just really believe that if we really believe that God owns everything we have and we're just managers over what he gave us and we take into consideration, if we are faithful in little, he will make us ruler over much. So beside it being multiplied, God is looking for our faithfulness and to see how we give an account for the things that we have. I look at another type of logistics. This had to do with social logistics in the book of John 17. And these things are just coming to me this afternoon. I, I, I didn't know what I was going to be talking about today, but these came to me this afternoon. And this is Jesus. Jesus is um, giving an account of his father, giving an account of his father in John chapter 17. Now, this is what he says. This is how Jesus considers the value in human resource. He says uh, to the Lord in, when he prays, um, let, me just, let me just read this. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son. This is uh, John 17, verse number one. Father, the hours come, glorify your son, that your son also may glorify you, and uh, as you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on earth. I have finished the work which you have given to me to do. Finish the work you've given me to do. And now, Father, glorify me together with yourself with the glory that I had with you before the world was. I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. For I have given to them the words which you have given me and they have received them and have known surely that I came forth from you and they have believed that you sent me. Then he goes on, he says, um, uh, he talks about, yeah, in verse 12, I was with them. Jesus is having some very strange language, very strange language here, praying from earth, but he's talking to his father in two dimensions. He's, uh, he says, while I was with them, even though he's praying from earth in the world, I kept them in your name. Those who you gave me, I have kept and none of them is lost except the son of perdition. That the scripture might be fulfilled. Now, what we see here is Jesus is giving an account even to the disciples that the Lord gave him and he chose, he poured into their lives the things that the, the father had for them to learn and to know. And now he's given an account before going to the father to be with him. I've kept those who you gave me. None of them were lost except one, the son of perdition. So we see human resources and logistics and Jesus giving an account of those who were committed to his care, the human resources that were committed to his care. Not only that he knew the number of them, he fed them and he gave them what the father had intended, realizing he was not the owner of these men, but they belonged to the heavenly father. So he was good with human resources and logistics of understanding that these human resources are precious, they were given by God and they were to be cared for. And Jesus was giving an account to his father of those things that he had done with them while in the earth. Um, there are some more uh, passages of scripture that, that I'm just trying to think about when it comes to this issue of logistics and how uh, just the thought of, of of numbers, the thought of putting ourselves into a position for increase, um, that how our faithfulness 
in the things that God has assigned to our hands can lead to mul multiplication and to more. The Bible tells us in the book of Mark where he says uh, about how there's increase inside of the kingdom. It's like a seed, the seed that is planted in the ground. It grows, it germinates, it grows, it develops, and then it bears more fruit. It bears more fruit. So it, it plays into this, be fruitful and multiply. So God is looking for us to increase. So using our minds, using the, the thinking that the Lord has given us, the, the, the intellect, the understanding. This is why, you know, I, I hear Mark talking about, you know, researching and doing, looking into things and, and, and investigating and finding out things. And some of you all are like that as well. Oh, investigating and reading and researching. Why? Because everything just doesn't come from the Bible per se, but, but there are parenthetical things that we find that can help us to understand and help us to realize the total thing that the Lord is, is, is revealing to us and what he's showing us in how to operate here on earth. So I want to encourage us today. I want to hear from you today to find out about what are you hearing inside of logistics? What are you hearing inside of management? Um, there was, uh, you know, when you had the military, you know, there were numbers about the military and how many were to be dispatched and how many uh, were, you know, cared for. And you can see how many though was lost. You know, you, you hear the Bible recording these numbers of people, you know, and then we see uh, other examples about uh, stewardship, other examples about multiplication, other examples about um, about multiplication and and about uh, the the talents, those kind of things there, where we we know what we're working with and we also understand how to make it grow. So the Lord wants to. I feel in this hour, He wants to introduce us into what it is like to increase and multiply from the things that he's given to us by way of faithfulness and accountability. That's the moral of this presentation, that we're to think and to utilize our creativity and our understanding. How can I increase the king's resources? How can I make it um, multiply? How can I make it last? How can we cause the fish and the bear and the and the barley loaves to be multiplied. Um, one of the things that I want to say about this, I feel that is happening prophetically, is the fact that um, when we have a plan for multiplication, it must consider the benefit for others. Jesus asked for the for the fish and the five loaves for the benefit of the people. And the disciples walked away with baskets too. So I'm just saying that our increase should our increase should have in its consideration the thoughtfulness for others. How do we make the lives of others better in some fashion or in some form? How can we hear from God to say to sit, to show us where the benefit is, where the ideas are? things that people haven't even thought of yet, that we won't be on the tail end. And I declare and decree today, we will not be on the tail end of ideas and of concepts and ideas, but they will emerge from us. They will emerge from the kingdom. They will come forth from the kingdom. They will come forth from God's people, that we will set the pace, that we would allow the genius of God to flow through us, through ideas and witty inventions, and we would be able to put feet and we would be able to put action to the things that God has given us, and there would be increase because the world would be better because we have been in it, because we're connected to God and we're an expression of his love for the world. Jesus was the firstborn of many brothers. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. But he was the first of many brothers. So what are the brothers doing? What are we doing? The, the, the brother, and we're not mean, meaning this in a, this isn't a male, female term of sons. We're talking about sons, mature sons in the earth 
What should we be doing? The same thing that Jesus did. Now, instead of having one son in the earth that shows the love and manifests the love of God, now there are many sons that manifest and show the love of God. Listen, our world is messed up. It is messed up. Our world is messed up. And one of the reasons why I believe our world is messed up, uh, not just because um, um, you know, of what you know, just the consequences of this people leaving God out. I also believe that the things are messed up because God has stepped back so we can really see our true need for him. We could really see our true need for him. When we when we act like we don't need God, when we try to go it alone and we try to be independent of him, we don't fare well. We don't fare well. We really don't. And so the Lord is calling us to uh, display, to release, to manifest his um, love for the world, his resources, his uh, his peace uh, that the Lord wants to, to, to have in this world, real, healthy, balanced human beings that express his power, wisdom, and authority and his nature inside of the earth. And we are to multiply and to increase and to add, just like he said in his word, be fruitful and multiply. We have the technology inside of us to be fruitful and to multiply. And God has given us authority to be fruitful and to multiply and to be logistical in our thinking, to care for the things that God has given to us, that we, when that day comes to give back to him and to give an account, we could say like Jesus said, I have kept those that you have given to me. I've kept them in your name. I've kept them in your word. Nothing is, none is lost except for one. None is lost except for one. And so when we look at Jesus, we see uh, this, even the, with this logistics, you all about, you know, Jesus, the example of Jesus forsaking the 99 for the one. That's, I mean, <laughs> look at the love of Jesus. It's like the, the pack is not complete without this one. Why? Because the one was given as, as well as the others. So we see the passion in the heart of God in keeping what was given and, and taking care of what was given so that there's a, a real, beginning with a real understanding, these are not my sheep. <laughs> these are not my sheep. I'm caring for these sheep for the one who has given them to me. Yeah, that's another uh, another picture of logistics, you know? So I really believe that the Lord is releasing creative ideas. I really believe that the Lord is changing us. He's changing us to think different. He's challenging us to think different. He's challenging us to be the people. This is what I believe. And Mark can uh, maybe talk more about this or maybe correct me uh, if I'm wrong. But I, I really have a strong sense that the one who is prophesied over, the one who is prophesied over is not the one that will receive the prophecy. That, that once I receive a word from the Lord, I must grow and develop into that. Because I've received words before where those things did not manifest with the group of people I was with. They manifested in another context of life. They did happen but they didn't happen in the context of where I was when I received the prophecy. So I'm just saying you all that even in our prophecies, we want to manage our prophecies. What did God say to, uh, what did Paul say to, uh, to Timothy? He says, I want you to war with the prophecy. You can only war with the prophecy if you have it available. It must be available. It must be at your disposal in order to be able to war with the prophecy. You have it available. You know what God said and you can stand and you can, you can hold fast to what he has given to you. That is stewardship. That is 
that is in, in a sense logistics, being able to be a steward of the words that were given over our lives, that we that we care for the word, that we have a, a great regard for the word, we honor the word, that these are not just frivolous words because we're building our life on these words, you all. We're building our futures on these words. We are, we are building everything, our expectation, our hope. It's in the word of God, what he has said. And so um, I was trying to think of some other uh, areas. Some of you all may have some areas of where you could see uh, logistics and numbers and, um, and accountability inside. Some of you all have jobs that that puts you in a position where you have to keep track of numbers and, and checks and balances and all of these kind of things that God gets into those things. He really gets into those things. He, he really has a, a, a heart for those who demonstrate the love and the care for the resource that have been given to us by him. And that's the thing, regardless to what we have, we all have the same thing. We all have the same thing. We all have time. We all have time. We may not always have, we may not all have the same amount of time, but we all have time. We all have treasure. We may not all have the same amount of treasure, but we all have treasure. Um, and then we all have talents. We may not all have the same talents or the same amount of talents, but we do have talents. So we can be creative, the children of God. So Let's take the limit off of what can be done for us. Let's take the limit off of what God can do. Let's take the limit off of ourselves, okay? And as we ascribe to be a greater expression and a more God expression of what he designed for us to be, because we have to grow into the prophecy. Remember the, the, the son, we have the son that was born, the child that was born and the son that was given and we, um, I heard a message earlier today that spoke to that part of development. The government will be on the shoulder of the sun. And so there's responsibility for us inside of this. And we want to take care of the responsibilities that we have been given. And it starts with love. It starts with love for the giver, the one that is given to us, the one that has given us life the one that has given us time, the one that has given us treasure, the one that has given us talent, so that we could glorify him in the earth. I thank God because there's no need for jealousy and competition, no need for it. When we really understand who we are and what we've been given, when we really understand how much God loves each and every one of us, we don't have to look at someone else's lane. We don't have to... Uh, be sad if someone else gets blessed or someone else does this. We don't even think in those terms because we understand our connectedness to each other. We understand that just like God loves my brother or my sister, he loves me too. He loves me too. So uh, I would like to open up the conversation if we could regarding, I want to look at logistics, being a, taken into account the number of things that we have. Uh, I want to take into account uh, the faithfulness in these things. Um, I also uh, want to take into account using our mind, allowing the Holy Spirit to give us creativity and thoughtfulness about what is possible. Yes, God wants to use you. You may not have an earthly history of, of what people could say, well, I don't want you. I don't like you. You're not this. You're not that. That's not what God says about you. That's not what God says about you. The world can be cruel. People can be mean, but we have a heavenly father who is loving and supportive. And so we don't have to succumb to the negativity, the things that people say about us, because at the end of the day, you and I are fearfully and wonderfully made. God thought it necessary for you and I to be born in this time to declare his word, to declare his glory, to, de to declare his expression of life and himself in the earth. God thought it necessary. With all of the billions of people in the earth, God said, I want you to be living during these times. And when you talk to me, when you speak to me in prayer, I hear your voice. I hear your voice. You're here because I want to hear your voice. All of the billions of people, all of the billions of people, you know, I would, I, I think about this. Why does God care to decorate 
the fish in the ocean with so many intricate and beautiful colors because it glorifies him. God is a God of beauty. God is a God of art and, and, and expression. And it glorifies him. The colors of the fish out of the earth, under, under, in the water, glorify him. It glorifies him. It speaks to, to, to him. So I want to talk about this today, uh, you and I, uh, and I have some conversation about this. The, the mic is open for questions or comments regarding it. Logistics, faithfulness, and mindfulness with creativity, how we can increase it, how God has given us the ability to increase and multiply. Even though we may not have seen those things happen in our life in a large way, they are available to us. So we have to do a mind shift and to think on, on the way God thinks about creation, about multiplication and addition. Thank you, friends. There are many things we can discuss in this. Yes, Kelly. Yeah. That's, that's wonderful. Um, I think in the things that you have said, I hear the issue of increase. I hear the issue of generosity. Um, I hear the issue of count your blessings. Um, I hear the issue of fruitfulness. Um, there are so many things that are layered in there. And um, as you spoke, there's a song that came to mind. Uh, it's by Avin Slaughter. And the title is That's When. That's When. And he tells the story in that song of the little boy with um, five loaves of bread and two fishes and how Jesus multiplied it. And the crust of the matter is, if you have a work to do and the works, the tax seems bigger than you, that's when he steps in. If we can begin to come to the place of acknowledging the resources, the logistics that God uh, have made available to us, and we cannot trust him, we cannot submit all of that to him, it becomes um, a point of expansion. Again, in 2 Kings chapter 4, we see this widow, the wife of the prophet, who goes to Elisha, and Elisha asks the question, what do you have in your house? If we can begin to look at or do a search in our homes, in our houses, the search of our lives. We will have so many things to be thankful for and also have a brand new starting contest. Maybe I'm stagnated. Maybe I do not see myself moving forward. You know, um, today, Gilda told me something. That was late morning. I was outside at the porch when she called me in and um, she was discussing so many things, business and what, what, what. Then she said, the Lord spoke to me that there are so many people who um, have all kinds of situations in their lives. They have money, but they cannot sleep. And the Lord spoke to her concerning the fact that she has peace. And She's grateful to God for pointing her to that reality and making her aware of such level of logistics, the peace of God, the, the atmosphere of tranquility, the good health. If we cannot acknowledge these things, we are not even at the starting point of making coming into true riches. Because true riches is bound up in the reality of the expansion and development of our souls, the quality of human beings that we become, the quality of people that we become. It changes the way we handle 
currency, we handle money, we handle wealth, we handle riches, we handle opportunities, we handle people. So uh, this is a very um, a formidable thing, Kelvin, you, you've thrown into this whole conversation. And I want to say thank you. So let's share our thoughts. Let's jump into this. If um, you cannot share uh, by opening your microphone, write up something, share it. I think I see something here. Timmy says that, amen, we, we, we will be at the forefront of releasing creative ideas. We will yes. be at the forefront of releasing creative ideas. That is that. We have to embrace that. We have to embrace that. I have often said that sometimes the power of an answer prayer lies in the strategic action that we ought to take. And very often, God is waiting on us to act. He would have answered a prayer long ago. And it's just one single action on that idea. Have you not realized uh, they call it quantum Oh no no, there's something there's something in science. It's not quantum. Have you not realized that you you had an idea two years ago, and you didn't value it so much? Suddenly you saw somebody implement it on a wild street, and you are wondering what happened. There is there is a way science calls it. The same rhythm is playing out. God is speaking to all. And if we can begin to value the nothing in our home, a little jar of oil, this, this thing is this significant, it doesn't make sense. This thing cannot turn mm. into, into wealth. But if we can value it, we present it to God, he multiplies it. Thank you very much. And I love that, Mark. I love that because here's the thing. We cannot determine the value of what God wants to do with your idea, with your offering, whatever it is you're giving to him, don't minimize it. We can't minimize it and think, well, this is insignificant and nobody wants this. Nobody wants to hear what I have. Nobody wants my idea. No, those are not things that we should consider. We should consider the one who gives it to us. And so, like you said, uh, you were talking about just a little small cruise of oil and she listened under the command of the prophet that gave that word and he said borrow many vessels not a few all right you know you're going to give these back but just 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 borrow them and the and the oil never stopped until there was no more vessels so what this tells me about this miracle is to the degree we're able to supply God something to fill is to the degree he will allow oil to run. To the degree the Lord, we're able to supply a container for him to fill is to the degree of what he, how he will cause it to flow. You know, so he wants to fill it. Why? Because, because he is a God to bring fulfillment. But but he's he's not wasteful. He's not wasteful. He could be extravagant, but he's not wasteful. God is not wasteful. So we want to consider the resources that he's given to us, and they're meant to be shared. Even even a prayer or an, a, an observation you make, you can say to a person, you know, you really did that well. You really did that well. And it's genuine, and it's, it, it's nothing to, uh, it's it's unfeigned. It's genuine. When you compliment someone and say, you know, you really did a good job with that. And I can just tell you carry a spirit of excellence and you, you know, you do well with this and you do well with that. Those kind of things really encourage people along the way. They really do. And that is something you can give that many times we don't even consider as seeds. We don't even consider those little things as seeds, but they're very, very significant. Significant, they're very significant. Someone can have hope out of what we say we don't have. Someone can give, get encouragement and someone can build their life or change it in a completely different direction out of encouraging word that they hear. So I'm saying you all, God has given us something. We don't know how much time 
You may know how much resource you have, but we don't know how much talent, how much creativity. So let's believe God. Let's believe God to be able to increase our hands, not settle on what we have. We could be grateful, like Mark was saying, about thanking God for counting our blessings and being fruitful and being thankful to him for all that he's blessed us with. But precious saints of God, let's not settle. Let's not settle. Let's not settle for what, what can, can happen through us, what the Lord wants to give us. Let's not settle. Let's not settle. Let's, let's see how far, let's see how far he will take us. Let's see how much we can change. Let's dare to believe. Let's, let's follow God's lead and maximize what he's given to us. Let's maximize what he's given to us. We can do it, you all. Many times we're under heavy burdens and the speed of our life is so fast and we try to put the brakes on, but we have to slow down to the speed of God. We got, like Mark always says, we got to trust him. Listen to what he says. Keep our ear close to his heart to see what he is saying. And when we follow his lead, he leads us into where he wants us to be. So I want us to consider what do we have? Like Mark was asking with the uh, the woman, the widow, what do you have in your house? She knew what she had in her house, not only because it was just all she had, that could, could have been the reason, but she knew she at least had some oil. She knew at least she had some oil. Hello, Kevin. Sorry, yeah. Let me, let me just jump in. Uh, Please. There's Please something that, that occurred to me. In 2015, uh, Gilda was um, hospitalized. Oh, hospitalized, whatever. Gilda was in the hospital and um, we we're expecting a baby. It was around the sixth, seventh month or so. And then we lost this baby in 2015, uh, close to December something powerful happened. We had three boys already. So on this particular day, I was supposed to take the children to school. Um, no, okay, so I'm missing the story. There are two things in that. Number one, in 2015, while she was in the hospital, um, I was, um, somebody took me to the hospital to see her. And then we drove back. Then there was a prophet on radio. I know him very well, very dynamic. I know him. He knows me personally. And I pick up the phone to call him. And when I pick up the phone to call on, it, uh, it, on the radio line that he's using, he they certainly wouldn't know I'm the one. So God being so good, the call went through. And then he said, hello. I said, hello, sir, prophet of God. Good evening. He said, good evening. He said, where are you calling me from? And I mentioned my location. I said, I mentioned my location. I said, sir. And he said, you, 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 you. Papa God will use you all over the world. And everybody will hear of you. When are you coming to see me? You need to come and see me. You are a great guy. You need to come. He knows me very well. He knows me very well. But he is in prophetic stuff. And what do I want to say about this? My wife was in the hospital. I was looking for a word in that time that will provide me um, something in connection to my wife in the hospital because we have a baby that is dying. But God never spoke about that. God began to speak about something. It's important that we turn our eyes and our energy to where God has the emphasis. What do you have in your house? Go borrow more verses. It doesn't make sense at all. And the mistake we often make is that we say we have nothing and we place no value. Again, so she is in the hospital again in 2017 and we are expecting Pinky. In fact, we didn't know even Pinky would come or not. I've been so busy back and forth hospital. 
And this morning, I was supposed to take the boys to school. And there was no Milo. Some people say Milo. There was no Milo in the house. There was no chocolate in the house to prepare a chocolate drink or chocolate for them in the morning. So what I did was, um, there was not enough. So I I diluted. I mean, if any of you have been in this kind of situation before, you understand what I'm saying and you'll be beaming with smile. The, the quantity of Milo cannot even fix one cup of, of, of chocolate drink for one person. And there are three. So you can imagine the equation. I diluted it well. And thankfully, I think there was sugar. I added a little sugar to it. And there was bread. We were late for school. We couldn't go out to buy. We just had to get this done and leave the house. Now, the first two boys drank this milo. But the third boy said he will not because it's not sweet. There's not enough chocolate in the in the cup. And I went back and I told him in front of his brother, I said, listen, there are some folks who are just looking for sugar to add to water and they drink in the morning and go to school and they come back, they'll drink water till night and they go to bed. You have sugar in this. You have a little milo and you have bread. You mean you will not place value on this and eat it? Anyway, I, I we are already late for school. I'm not going to run around to get anything. You have to manage this if you want. And I left to get myself ready. I was getting myself ready. Then he came to me and said, Daddy, I have taken the Milo. In my estimation, he evaluated. There are some people who just want sugar to put in water so they will drink. And that will be the only food they will have the whole day until the next day. They don't have. You have bread, you have a little milo, highly diluted <laughs> milo, and you have sugar in there. What am I saying? It boils down to the, the, the servants, five talents, two talents, and one. And somebody will carry his five and bury it. Somebody will implement it. There has to be a decisive strategic action with all of us, with what we have. Sometimes we are in abundance, but we are crying um, um, out of luck that there isn't anything. We are living in abundance, but we are crying and saying there is nothing. May God help us. May God give us sight. May God open our eyes to see. May God give us sight to see. And may the Lord give us the wisdom to be able to walk in powerful implementations. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, what a great testimony. I'm, it's, it's really something. I mean, this walk with God is very, very different. We can't treat God like a human. He has, he has thoughts for us that are very beneficial, but a walk with God is is very different because when he asks us to do something or forsake something, it's not because he doesn't want us to enjoy ourselves. He has a different kind of jealousy than humans have. He's jealous for good things for us, not for evil. Or He's not jealous because someone else is getting more time with us than him. He doesn't have that kind of jealousy. It's a jealousy to want to see us do well and to follow his his word so this is very very good mark i begin to think about you know is god still good even though i may not have enough i should be grateful for whatever it is that i have and we we begin there timmy writes thank you kelvin for the amazing teaching thank you for touching the fact that the kingdom should be at the forefront of the ideas and the solution i, I realize that god is intentionally shaking things he's making the wisdom of this world fail because the earnest expectation of creation awaits manifestation of the sons of god god wants to manifest his wisdom through the church to the world he is intentionally shaking things because the solution to the world's economy Econo economy, education, entertainment, etc., lies in the strength 
and character of the wisdom of sons of God. Amen, Timmy. Amen. Amen. And so we want to be good stewards over what God has given to us as sons in the earth. What does that mean? That we carry authority. We carry his nature. We carry his word. We carry his authority, his nature, and his word. So very good, Timmy, very good. Let's take the limits off of what God can do. Let's take the limits off of what we can expect from him. And let's go with his desire for us. It could far exceed, Ephesians 3.20 tells us, it far exceeds, it far exceeds um, what, it, what it was able to happen. What does it say? Um, now to him that is able to do exceedingly, Ephesians 3.20. Now to him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all. We're able to ask or think according to the power that works in us. Power that works in us. And I, I pray, I declare that the shaking of these dormant gifts and talents and dormant abilities would be arisen inside of us, that we would come to see an expression of God like we never had, that we would, we would demonstrate something in the earth as sons of God, that the earth is waiting for a great expression of who he would want us to be in the earth as never before, that he would be glorified, that multiplication and addition would come to us and through our hands to help others, to be a blessing to others, to benefit others as an expression of God's love to the world. Very, very good. God, God wants to give us, I see creativity, I really do. I see God giving us creative ideas. And let me encourage, Let's not look very far. Let's not get too deep with it. Let's just consider the proximate things. Open our minds and hearts to things that may not be very far away from us that God wants to reveal and, and reveal even to the world as genius. It's like this thing was so close to normalcy. How come no one ever saw, no one ever saw this? Because God has taken things and reserved them for his people. God has taken wisdom and reserved it for his people. The, the world could never have thought of it because the wisdom of God is foolishness to the world and the wisdom of the world is foolishness to God. Thank you, friends. Anyone else? Any thoughts? Any thoughts on this? God is preparing us. We're not just doing time. God is preparing us. God is preparing us. He's preparing our hearts and our minds. He's removing limits. He's removing limits from us. He's widening the aperture of our sight. He's causing us to see beyond what is apparent in front of us. He is building our faith. He's strengthening us, te teaching us. All of this is for a purpose and a reason and a season and a time that he's preparing us for. Thank you, friends. Anyone else? Yes, Kevin. Uh, I was just going to say that um, it may not be a contribution, but it may be a question. Uh, it may be a question. It's still important. Because what we're doing here, we've seen, we've seen varying atmospheres in um, these gatherings. And mm -hmm. this evening is one unique atmosphere. Um, it's gentle, but it's making an impact of a bullet. It's easy, but it's pulling us into remembrance. It's gentle, but it's pushing us towards action. It's increasing our faith, it's invigorating in us capacity to do. Capacity to do. And I want to encourage every one of us, 
I believe just like Kelvin have declared by the word of the Lord that God is releasing new ideas. God is committing into our hands resources for generosity. God is committing resources into our hands to ensure something else happens. I There's a book, in fact, somebody in Ghana says that when he wakes up in the morning, there are two things he thinks about, fight and money. He's, he's a rich guy. He says he just thinks about fighting and money. There's a book I'm reading, God and Money. When I wake up, I think about God and money. And it's intriguing to know that when you think about God, you treat people differently, you handle circumstances differently. And there is a piece I read last night. Let me just read it. Is that um, one of the paragraphs? It was forwarded by, let's see this guy, Randy Alcon. Randy Alcon forwarded this book for the two gentlemen that wrote it. He said, it is time for Christ, Christ followers to understand that God has bigger purposes than increasing our standard of living. Than increasing our standard of living. He wants us to increase our standard of giving. I mean, speaking about generosity, I'm just going to put in this book, generosity. So that when we begin to, we begin to step into resources, we have to know that the kingdom of God has a purpose and resources being wisdom, ideas, relationships. Once we begin to touch the kingdom, those things expand. God bless you. So if there's any question that is that is beautiful, we throw it in. It will be good if you have any question. All right. I think I think today we're closing in, in, in good time. We have some 30 minutes. Um, we just want to thank God for this opportunity. And I want to say thanks to everyone that is on the call today. Um, let me do this. Hey, Temi is here. Zorina is here. Galaxy A03S. It will be good to just know you. And then Mickey is here. Uh, charity is here. K, uh, that is Ahuma, and someone is here. God bless you all. Take this word, meditate upon it, run with it. God bless you. God bless you. Kelvin, any thoughts before we we sign off? Galaxy A03S. Please, who is that? Oh, Pastor Mark, it's in the chat. Oh, okay. Okay. That's Pastor Michael's wife. Okay. That's a great <laughs> woman, huh? That's a great woman. That's, that's a strong mother. That's a great woman. Beautiful. Good to have you. Good to have you, Shelly. Great. So let's just say a word of prayer. Father, I want to thank you for tonight, this afternoon, this morning. Lord, we thank you for this connection. Your word says that if one member breaks through, all breaks through. If one member suffers, all suffers. Lord, there was a conversation recorded in Malachi, the Malachi conversation, and they spoke with one another. Those who fear you, those who meditate upon your name, they gossip about you. They had conversations that relate to the kingdom, and you listen, and you move into action. Father, we so ask that this evening you move into action on everyone's behalf. There are expectations on this call. There are there are people hungry and seeking answers. Lord, tonight, um, this afternoon, Lord, down the road, you shall invade us with visionary encounters. You shall invade us with impressions. You shall invade us with dreams. 
usually invade us with direct prophetic words from people speaking into our world and causing us to navigate and, and, and be at the ebb and flow of your speed. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. Let everything be subjected to you. We declare over every life, we declare over everything that concerns us, Jesus Christ is Lord. Father, thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you. Kevin, thank you very much. God bless you. Zarina, thank you God bless you, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good evening and good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you so much, everyone. Good night.